What's up everybody, how you doing? It is day 100 out here for me at Vail Resorts this year, so check out what the lifties little scanner guns do on day 100. What's up, Mom? How you doing? I saw you on ProComp or whatever. Hey, you Oh, congrats. <laughs> Thanks, man. <Big> day. <laughs> Plays the Rocky theme. Today's video, I want to talk about something more theoretical than tangible, but how to get really good at snowboarding. It's not about snowboarding a lot. I luckily do get to snowboard a lot, but that, you know, there's so many people out here that snowboard way more than me, and some of them suck. What's got me thinking about this is there's a person I see out every sunny day riding the half pipe, and so I'll consider them a half pipe rider, but uh, every run, they kind of just bomb straight down to the half pipe doing these bullshit skidded turns, straight down the fall line and then once to the half pipe this person after years and years of doing this and i've seen him so often can still cannot get out of the half pipe and it's because of those skidded turns there's no glide down the transition across the flat bottom up the wall so all this practice practice doesn't make perfect practice makes permanent so this person is just reinforcing bad habits and trying harder and harder probably in the pipe with still no results of actually being able to get out so i don't know uh if you want to get good at really good at park you really should go out snowboarding and work on carving for at least you know maybe the first hour of the day most parks aren't lit up until a bit later in the afternoon anyway same with most pipes um, so just getting out there and actually working on your edges is really what's made all the difference for me and other really good riders I know. Way back in the day, most top half pipe riders were actually racers too. Think of like Craig Kelly, Tom Sims, uh, even in the early 90s, JCJ Anderson, who I think is still a professional racer. I remember watching a contest with him and he was boosting way bigger than everyone else. I know an X Games uh, champion who used to, you know, half pipe champion, who used to race. And uh, you know, like I'm thinking of Team Gilbo in Minnesota, all those little kids that used to snowboard on Alpine equipment, race gates and stuff, and then go do the freestyle disciplines. And just knowing how to ride your edges like that is really what makes the difference for them too. So uh, I remember myself at Afton Alps, struggling so hard to grasp how to carve a board. And you know, I didn't have the luxury of all the YouTube tutorials and all that stuff nowadays, but you know, watching YouTube videos won't do it either. You, but it will plant a seed of like things to try. And uh, you, then it's all about you having to go out there and just slow it down, take it, work on what's not comfortable. I remember, you know, just so many icy nights at Afton, just doing these skidded turns and trying to get them to get half shape and carve. And then the same thing switch. Like I could do front side 180s and then all of a sudden I'd land and didn't know what to do. And then it was all about just practicing riding switch, skidded turns, skidded turns. And then I remember the frustrations of trying to learn how to carve that switch. You know, it just takes time. But once you got that, that's the foundation of snowboarding. Riding your edges regular, switch, being able to do skidded turns however you want, being able to do carved turns however you want. And then a lot of things in the park are super easy after that and the progression can go way up. The conditions are pretty firm today, but uh, you'll really see the difference and hear the difference of a gliding on the carved turn, riding that edge, versus skidding, the friction of skidding that edge down the mountain. Other than this kind of theoretical framework of how to get really good at snowboarding, just by slowing it down, working on your own turns, regular and switch. And I love doing it by myself because then you're at your own pace. If you're with people who are going fast, it's going to force you just to go make high speeds, get it turns down the mountain. So hey, let me kick out a couple of practical applications for doing it and how it applies to park riding. If you work on these quick little skidded turns back and forth where you can turn on a dime, this is really going to help you to be able to line up for like a rail, a box. Uh, maybe a straight air off a jump, but just being able to totally manipulate your board exactly how you want. You can see.
see it a mile away when people approach the park, how well they're gonna ride it. If they're riding their edges really good, looking super stable and balanced on their board, usually they're pretty good in the park. And if they're not, if they're just doing those high speeds, get it turns down to the park, those, that's who struggles in the park and has no variety because they don't have a nice approach to the feature. They don't have a nice ride away from the features. I am on a box. Wee! I am on a box again. Working on your carving outside the park, just really getting a nice heel side carve, a nice toe side carve. Well, that's your takeoffs for jumps, and it makes something like a front side 360 off of the heels very easy. Makes a backside 360 off of the toes very easy. If you're skidding your turns, eh, it's just not really going to work. I feel like I got pretty random with how I explained this versus what was in my mind when I started the day. But basically it's a simple ass. If you want to progress on a snowboard, it's not all about just the a frequency and the amount of time you're on the mountain. It's the progress that you make each time you're on the mountain with purposeful practice until it becomes second nature. So it's usually about slowing it down and getting out of your comfort zone to try, try new things at slow and safe speeds. So, uh, but that's really what will help you get carving well, switch carving well. And I mean, the, the beautiful feeling of carving is incredible by itself. But even if you're a park rider and have no interest in carving, ooh, you are missing out drastically of how much progression you can make in the park because of the skills that are required to be able to take off jumps, half pipe, etc. So I hope that makes some sense. Thank you all for watching. I wish you success with that. Apparently the next level stickers really help fill yourself with knowledge and I've heard make you a 20% better snowboarder. So with that, thank you all for watching. Happy shredding and kapla! I am on a box.